Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I'm the C-H-A-L-L -L, and welcome to another brand new video. Now today we're going to be going over the latest NBA possible trade deals with two months to go, under two months until the deadline. We're going to be going through a few of the sort of major breaking stories over the last 48 hours about potential trade deals with Reed, who's from NBA Trade Center on Instagram, who's one of the top uh, Trade Center reports uh, accounts. Uh, Reed, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you doing today? Doing very good. Um, so we're going to get started straight away. Uh, I guess Yes, sort of probably one of the main ones that's broken over the last 48 hours, and that includes or involves the Lakers and the New York Knicks. Now, this is on the deal involving Beverly, Nunn, Anderson, a 2027 first round draft pick because of the Steven rule, and of course Fournier and Reddish going the other way. Now, in your personal opinion on this potential deal, who would benefit from this if it was to go ahead? I think you gotta look at the Lakers as, a, as the winner here. I mean, you think about it. These are two teams that are always going to try to make moves. They're two huge markets in the NBA. So, you you know, you always expect uh, movement out of these teams. That 2027 Lakers pick is very valuable, right? Because you look at LeBron James' age. You look at Russell Westbrook. He's on a mountain decline. Um, but Anthony Davis is playing better. But with the Lakers, all you got to think about is shooting. Evan Fournier provides that. He's going to shoot around 40%, probably a little lower. He can provide you a little bit of playmaking. And on the Knicks side, you get that first round pick, but what else do you get? I mean, Patrick Beverly has been struggling this year. And, you know, you got to look to win because you just signed Brunson to that big contract. Julius Randle is not going anywhere. You can't sell him. And, um, you know, RJ Barrett's struggling. So you got to try to. Uh, I'm not sure the Knicks should be doing this for it. Yeah, absolutely. And to be fair, sort of speaking a little bit more on that 2027 pick, uh, when you look at the sort of top two prospects, even at this early stage, four years early, um, you know, AJ Debancer and Kosi Mabeji 04 uh, are the ones that come to name first. I mean, for those of you who don't know, I mean, Debancer is a big wing with an advanced frame, has the chance to be a special player. Um, Kosi is an incredibly bouncy and quick centre, who's uh, agile, long way to go, but elite physical tools in his development at this early stage I mean the 2027 picks are already starting to to roll in we're sort of seeing a couple of these prospects four years early sort of come into the mix um, but what what do you think the Lakers will need in that draft obviously it's hard to tell from four years down the line but what do you think the Lakers could need long term um, to sort of really get them up to speed and get them in a title winning picture again so yeah you just have to if you're the Lakers you have to imagine a post LeBron era right I mean He's going down slowly. I mean, it's LeBron. He's always going to be the best player on the team, or if not second with Anthony Davis falling. But if you look at it, how will the team – because Anthony Davis, he may not want to stay with uh, the Lakers after LeBron leaves. That's why he went there in the first place. Russell Westbrook will be gone. And they don't have a ton of young assets. I mean, who do they have? So if you're, if you're the Lakers looking forward to the 2027 draft, which is it's very early, you got to think about high potential, people who can, you can't replace LeBron, but, you know, help you replace him. And maybe a big man, because, you know, Anthony Davis may not be sticking around after his contract's up. I believe he has three years left. So that puts you right in 2027. Absolutely. Um, let's move on then, shall we, to another guy that seems to be dominating the headlines. According to Bleacher Report, the Trailblazers, the Kings, Heat, and the Mavericks are reportedly amongst the teams pursuing a trade for Nerlens Noel. And this comes from James Edwards III of The Athletic reporting that Noel and the Detroit Pistons have agreed a separation is best for both parties, in quotation. Where do you think it's gone for Nerlens Noel currently at this situation where do you think it's gone for him in detroit first of all well i mean you look at detroit obviously with the news coming out that Cade cunningham is going to miss the rest of the season it's you know go for when that's the game that's the game for the pistons right now also trying to check out killian hayes but you really have no idea i mean no place for uh Nerlens noel to be on the team right i mean you want to give isaiah stewart minutes what is a backup center like Nerlens noel going to do for you so where do you send him uh, what you want, what you're going to want back is maybe a, a couple second round picks if a team's willing to fork it over, or a boomer bust player, you know, a guy who, you know, has shown some flashes, but what are you going to do? You can't put him in the rotation if you're trying to win, and the people who are going to try to trade for Nerlens Noel are trying to win. Where Nerlens Noel could end up, I'm looking at the Clippers. You know, they've been really struggling with the loss of Isaiah Hardenstein uh, as their backup five. <clears throat> 
I'm looking at the Lakers. Damian Jones has been really underwhelming this year. You signed him to uh, bring you that back of five, but he's really not been great. Um, even Philly, you know, maybe a reunion because Montrez Harrell, I mean, he's been struggling as their back of five. Paul Reed isn't really providing any size. Uh, he's more of a four, but you you're, you're, you have to play him at the five uh, since they have no other options. So Nerlens Noel, really what his role is going to be is he's going to come off the bench. He's going to give you good defense, give you rebounding, and he's really not going to hurt you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of the, the four teams mentioned name-wise, the Trailblazers, the Kings, the Heat, and the Mavericks, could you understand to an extent why those four teams would be pursuing a deal involving Nerlens Noel? Yeah, those are, the four, those are four teams, you know, who are like either – new to the playoff hunt or right on that uh, bubble, right? So maybe New Orleans Noel, they see it like, you know, maybe Luca or Dame, maybe he can get some lobs from them and score 10 a night. You know, it's those types of teams are always looking for that guy to get them over the hump. Yeah, absolutely. Um, moving on then to a player that seems to be on the lips of many, many fans, and that is Kyle Kuzma. Uh, if rumours are to be believed that Kuzma could be on his way out as soon as possible from the Washington Wizards, where do you think Kuzma could go and what would the Wizards expect to get back? Kuzma, you know, rough exit from Los Angeles. But ever since he's been to Washington, a smaller market, you know, he's been more chill and less pressure. He's been balling. People don't see it. I mean, he's not going to be a guy who's going to give you 20 a night like people thought his rookie of year. But he's going to give you solid defense. He's going to be a double-digit score every night. And he's going he's gonna to stretch the floor. So who needs that? You think of teams that um, need shooting. I mean, do the Heat want to uh, replace uh, Jake, uh, P.J. Tucker. They've been struggling a lot. Is it, are they trying to build back up or are they trying to, you know, get rid of salary and look to next year? So I could see him going to the Heat, Philly. You know, Daniel House has been disappointing. I, you know, Matisse Thibel, Furkan Korkmaz, these guys can't really crack the rotation as much as you like. And P.J. Tucker can't score. So those are probably the two teams out east, I would think, would have interest. Yeah, absolutely. And finally, sort of the, the main one that I personally wanted to look at was, was Jay Crowder. And this is a very interesting one because there was talks through, through Shams from The Athletic about a potential three-team trade. Now, for those of you who don't know who's watching this right now, I'm going to go over sort of the specifics of what this potential trade looks like it's going to include. Uh, so this is involving the Suns, obviously, uh, with the Bucks, with the Rockets, and of course uh, with Houston. Now, Jay Crowder to Milwaukee Bucks, four second round picks from the Bucks and players to the Houston Rockets, and Eric Gordon and slash or Kenyon Martin Jr. to the Suns. Now, Miami Heat and Hawks are also interested in Jay Crowder, what about the, you then, mate? Where would you think is the more attractive deal for Jay Crowder and for the teams involved? I think you look at that trade that you mentioned and the teams that you're interested in. It's a, lot of, it's a very similar discussion to the one we just had. He's a big forward who's going to give you some defense. He's going to shoot the ball, although he's had some rough patches recently with the badge. I think you look at teams like the Grizzlies, the Heat. These are teams he's played for, had, had really uh, good success on them. And... You know, if you're the Suns, you hate to lose a guy like this, but he wants out. If you can get a guy like Eric Gordon, a guy who's a veteran, good, has played with Chris Paul before, he's going to shoot, and he's not going to make many mistakes. I mean, what more can you ask for? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just before we sign off then, is there any other players or teams that you think we should be watching out for before the trade deadline? Is there any other specific situations that you think we should be keeping an eye on? I think the Clippers, I think they'll be active, you know, their windows shutting down. Either they're like, okay, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, we need to strike the window while it's hot. Or they're going to be like, you know, these players, just they just aren't on the court. So what, what are they going to do? I could see them selling Robert Covington. He hasn't been getting the minutes they want. They have a ton of forward depth, maybe transition to more guard oriented play because John Wall, Reggie Jackson, they're great. They're more scoring, and you really want to play Maynard next to Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Absolutely agree. Uh, Reed, thank you very, very much for coming on the show today. Really do appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, and thank you guys for watching. Make sure you do like, comment, subscribe. I am the C-H-A-L-L. Ta-ra for now.